buxom fine widow, I live in a spot in Dublin, they call it the Kilm. Me shop and me stall are laid out on the street, and me palace consists of one room. At Patrick Street corner for 45 years I've stood there, I'm telling no lie And while I stood there, sure nobody would dare To say black was the white in me eye You may travel from Clare to the county Kildare From Drogheda right back be McCrewham but where would you see a fine widow like me? Biddy Mulligan, the pride of the kill. Me boys, Biddy Mulligan, the pride of the kill. I sell apples and oranges, nuts and split peas, bananas and sugar sticks sweet. Of the Saturday night I sell second-hand clothes And the floor of me stall is the street I sell fish in the Friday laid out on the dish fresh The history of this market, very briefly, is that it was built by Lord Ivey about 50 years ago at a cost of £50,000. It was established under the Dublin Corporation Markets Act of 1901 and opened in 1907. The idea was to drive the street traders off the street and put them here under a comfortable roof in Francis Street. Josie Toomey, whose family have been associated with the market here for the last 50 years since it opened. Well, now, what do you say about this rumour that the market's going to close? Do you think it will? No, it won't. It couldn't close. The public needs it. Five a pound, I'll take that a pound. Morning, I'll do you buy this off me for six bob five. Here, four for three, here, a half a pound, two bob. This market was opened for the poor dealers of Patrick Street and also for the poor of the community of the Liberties. I am a direct descendant from the street. My grandmother McCormick, her sister Bridie Biddy Lawler, came in. She was a fishmonger. We are having a lot, a lot of trouble with the corporation and now what's happened is we have a new principal officer in the engineering department and now he's come along since last September. He's after getting rid of 27 of the old traditional traders from the market. This market, in my book, can't be closed down because it was only given as a free gift to the corporation. The corporation don't own this. It's my heritage. People to me are robbing our heritage. And they've robbed enough in the whole city without coming along to Francis Street. The jewel of Dublin. What I'd like to know is why this song, Molly Malone, which everybody all over the world sings it, what's happened to Molly Malone? We know she's dead and buried and whatever, but are they trying to kill all of us off? This is a trade that we have, so what's going to happen to us? Do we not count as much as the office people that go in every day from 9 to 5? So, be interested for to get answers on that. You may talk of your outings, your picnics and parties, your dinners and dances and hoolies and all. But wait till I tell you of the gas that we had on the night that we went to the Charlady's Ball. I went there as Queen Anne and I went with me man. He was dressed as a monkey locked up in the cage. There was pirates and pirates and hottentots and whatnots and stars that you'd see on the music hall stage. At the Charlady's ball, people said one and all, you're the belle in the ball, Mrs. Mulligan. We had one steps and two steps and the devil knows what new steps we swore that we never would be done again, be that. We had wine, portrait and lemonade. We had cocktails and cocoa and all. Ah, we'd champagnes that night, but we'd real pains next morning, the night that we danced at the Charlady's Ball. There was cowboys and Indians that came from drunk on the sweet Francis Street fairies, all diamonds and stars. There was one of the Roonies at the clock over Moonies, and a telegram boy as a message from Mars. 
Mary Moore from the lots was the queen of the Scots With a crown out the world was patched up on her dome There was young Jimmy Whitehouse came dressed as a lighthouse And a Camden Street Gabo that should have stayed home At the char ladies ball people said one and all You're the bell of Mrs Mulligan We are children, good children, we come here to play, to sing and to dance and be merry and gay. And dear Lady Guinness, her heart is so good, she helps us poor children to do as we should. Tiptoe to the bay now, where the kids go for the bun and cocoa. Tiptoe to the bay now with me. Now that particular song comes from this particular building here behind me. We're standing in Patrick's Park, right beside St. Patrick's Cathedral. And this building is the Ivy Play Centre, which was built by Lord Ivy in 1913. And I went there as a child. You must remember, in those days, there was an awful lot of disease brought on mainly by the bad housing and the poverty and the insanitary conditions of the places because there were people living 15, 16 to a room and uh, with no facilities whatsoever, no running water. The children at the time were dying of diseases like diarrhoea, gastroenteritis, scarlet fever, typhoid. My own mother, when she was four years of age, suffered from uh, typhoid fever, and her younger brother of two, he died. So th these diseases were still around at that time. So we're, we were very grateful to Lord Ivy for providing some uh, easement from all of this. The Ivy Place Centre is only part of a larger complex of the, the Ivy Trust buildings, the working men's hostel and the uh, swimming pool and I spent very many happy hours there. Sadly the swimming pool is closed and that has been taken over by big business people and it's no longer available to the ordinary people in the area and now the Ivy Market has just closed down. The closure of the Ivy poses an awful lot of problems that nobody is addressing. Uh, for one thing, uh, the women who are, were in the Ivy and whose families were there for generations where are they going to go? Who's going to provide them with uh, a means of livelihood? Nobody is talking about um, their lives and what's going to happen to them in this uh, city at the moment where we hear nothing but the, the, the tiger, the big tiger that's full of money, and it, it, but he's not coming down here. I mean, the tigers that we used to have were the likes of um, Lord Ivy. They were the ones who put money into the area, but there's nobody uh, around uh, doing that anymore. None of the big business people at the moment are thinking of the poor people of the city whose city has been taken away from them. There is nothing in this city anymore. It's dead. And I'm told that the idea has been sold to speculators and it's going to be opened up as a yuppie market 